Hello everyone, welcome to another Wellness Wednesday. Sunday is Father's Day, so I thought we could talk about grilling today. Lots of men like to grill, it's an activity they enjoy, and if they don't like to grill, then they probably like to at least eat food from the grill. So we're gonna talk a little bit about food safety and grilling safety. So first of all, before you ever even approach the grilling process, we want to make sure that our grill is in a good, safe area. So I have my grill outside on a sturdy table. It needs to be on a solid surface, away from bushes. It doesn't need to be under cover and definitely not indoors or in a tent if you're camping. People die every year from carbon monoxide poison. So we definitely want to make sure that our grill is out in the open and in a ventilated area. Also, you want to make sure that your grill is sturdy. My grill is just a camping grill that we take to camp and we also use here at home, but it serves the purpose and it's a good sturdy grill. So this one works well. Now, before you ever do grill, first you have to go to the grocery store to get the meat. So when you are at the grocery store, make sure that the meat is one of the last things that you purchase. And then I always double bag my meats with a meat bag or a produce bag to protect the other foods and myself from any juices that could drip from the meats. And then I check the packaging, the sell-by date, make sure there's no rips or tears in the packaging. And the sell-by date, if you follow that, you need to make sure that you cook or freeze the meat within one to two days of the sell-by date. So then, once we bring our meat home, we want to make sure that we get it in the refrigerator within two hours. The sooner the better though. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> we want to prepare ourselves for grilling. So back to our grill, we want to make sure that our grill is clean, of course, when we use it. Um, so you can clean it before and after you grill. One way that I do clean it after we grill is we will take a wire brush and scrub the grates. They're nice and hot, so food slides off of them easily. Before grilling, you can <clears throat> take a paper towel or a napkin and put a little bit of vegetable oil on it and clean the grates. That will help food not stick. And then also, we need to talk about our charcoal. So some people like charcoal, some people like brisket, whichever one is your choice, that's fine to use. Um, we use charcoal. You need to use about 30 um, charcoal pieces per pound of meat. So then we would put our charcoal into our cleaned grill. You can line your grill also before you cook with aluminum foil um, underneath where you're going to add your charcoals. Um, <clears throat> shiny side up, that makes for easy cleanup at the end. Um, and then if I'm gonna add some lighter fluid, I also need to put the lighter fluid on the charcoal before I light it. Once I've lit the grill, I shouldn't add lighter fluid anymore because that is a very easy way to cause an accident that could have been avoided. Also make sure that you only use charcoal lighter fluid, something that is specific for that. We don't want to use gasoline or kerosene, um, <clears throat> nothing else flammable except what's intended for this purpose. So once we have done that preparation and we're ready to grill our foods, then we want to bring our food out to the grill um, on clean plates and, and use clean utensils, add them to the fire. Um, to the grill and then we're not going to use those plates and utensils anymore so you want to take them on into the house or set them aside so you won't absentmindedly pick them up they have fresh meat um, juice and meat product on them so it's not safe to use again so they need to be set aside and then you need to have fresh plates or platters or trays and utensils to um, put your meat on when it's done cooking. You also want to make sure that you use long handled spatulas and spoons, tongs, whatever you're using um, to protect yourself from the heat. Another great tip is to use a, a fire resistant mitt 
Obviously, my mitt has been used several times, but it works well. I also like to keep a bottle of water handy in case you have an unexpected flame. You can mist it and bring the flame down lower. I keep a towel close by for easy cleanup. When I'm grilling, we also want to make sure that our food is at the right temperature. So I like to use a food thermometer. This is the best and safest way to know if your food is brought to the right temperature. This thermometer has a little bitty notch on it on the side, so I know that it needs to go this far into the meat. So if I was cooking a hamburger, say my fist is a hamburger, I would, the meat's not gonna be that thick, so I would run it into the side. You want to make sure that you don't hit any bone or marrow, so you can get a true temperature reading. So, and then of course, you do need to know what you need to get, what temperature your foods need to be cooked to. So beef, lamb, veal steaks, and roast need to be 145 degrees. Ground beef, pork, veal, and lamb. Ribs and roast need, <coughs> need to be 160 degrees. Ground turkey and chicken needs to be cooked to 165 degrees. Chicken breast on the grill or turkey breast need to be cooked to 170 degrees and 180 degrees for a whole chicken or a whole turkey. So you want to definitely make sure that you get your foods the temperature that they need to be cooked to. If you like them cooked a little um, more well done than that, then you can cook them longer but you want to make sure that at a minimum that your foods are at those temperatures. Also, if you're gonna use any marinades on your foods, make sure that you discard all of your leftover marinade. We don't want to reuse those. And in the comments, I'm adding a, a resource for you to find some um, homemade rubs for your meats. Lots of people like to use rubs. And, when you're finished cooking, after you have taken the food away from the grill, off the grill, and you're ready to enjoy it, um, while your grill is still hot, take the time to go eat, but then come back and clean your grill again. If you use the oil on your grill, it should clean very easily for after cleanup, but then when you go to use your grill the next time, your, your prepped um, cleaning prep before you grill will be easier to do. So I hope you guys enjoy your Sunday. I hope you enjoy time with your fathers or your uncles or your sons, whoever you spend the day with. But I hope that everyone has a safe Father's Day and that everyone is doing well. And don't forget the great grilling tips.